Hello YouTube, Gamer Dad here, and we are on a video number 22 in our 2D Space sh Shooter tutorial series in XNA, and um, this will be the Explosion class. Um, I have found a few fixes um, for our HUD class that I mentioned last time about getting like the the length of the string, and um, so we know how to center stuff, and I, there is a function for that. Uh, built into X and A. So we'll be doing that in a future video, but I really want to get this explosion video done because I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to add a lot to our game. All right. So with that, uh, let's get started. We are going to ahead and create a class. So right click your project over here in your solution and add a class. Now we're just going to call this explosion class. So explosion and add it. We will, as usual, grab our framework, um, our using statements for X and A from our player class, put it into our explosion, and make our class public. Okay, and we're going to have a lot of variables here. Now, I could have went a few ways with the explosion class. I could have made like a, since there's going to be animated sprites, I could have made like an animated sprite class and uh, use that within here, but I think uh, since we're only going to have a few things animated anyways, uh, we can just build them right into the classes as we do it, okay? Uh, so starting out, we're going to have, like I mentioned, a lot of variables up here, and we're going to start with our texture 2D. And then we're just going to call that texture, like normal. A public vector 2 called position. Um, let's see, a public float called uh, timer and we're gonna have to use timers and, and intervals and stuff like that because we're gonna be doing some animated sprites okay um, public float uh, interval and uh, I already put the explosion uh, image you need in my in my zip file in my Dropbox so if you re-download that it should be in there along with a few other things for some future videos uh, like some sound effects and some background music okay uh, another public vector 2 um, called origin. Um, a, a couple of ints um, called current frame. Um, sprite width and sprite height. Okay, a public rectangle called source rect for source rectangle which is going to be uh, so it's going to be forming a rectangle so we know since it's a sprite sheet we need to know where to grab the image from and when so this source rectangle is going to help us do that okay and then a public bool is visible like our other classes because we're going to be creating a explosion list in our um, game1.cs to handle these and removing them from the game okay and that is it um, next will be our constructor Okay, so it's it's just a public uh, explosion, and it's going to take a couple of uh, arguments here. It's going to be a texture 2D called new texture, and a vector 2 called new position. And you've seen this in a couple of our other classes, like our asteroid class, when we need to, uh, or our enemy class too, when we need to set a texture and a position when we instantiate it in our game one class. Okay. and we are going to just set our variables up there to our defaults so our position will be equal to new position because we want our position set to whatever we put in here when we call uh, when we instantiate our object right okay and then um, our texture will be equal to new texture same as I just mentioned uh, our timer we're gonna start at zero we put the F there because it's a float uh, interval will equal um, 20 which is a float and this is the the time between uh, basically we're gonna if you want to speed up or slow down the animation um, process like how fast the animation f uh, runs through its its uh, frames uh, you'll either you'll increase this number to, to uh, slow it down and you'll reduce this number to speed it up so if you want to um, make the the animation go faster, you'll reduce the time between frame switches. Okay? That, that's what our interval does. 
uh, current frame. Basically, this is just telling um, telling it which frame we're going to start on, and it's going to be the first frame in our sprite in our uh, sprite sheet. Sprite width we will set equal to uh, 128 because I already know the uh, dimensions of the sprite sheet, and it's 128 by um, uh, basically the sprite width and the sprite height will be the size of each individual image on that sprite sheet and it's 128 by 128 okay uh, sprite height like I said 128 so each frame will be um, 128 by 128 and I'll explain this more when we uh, start working in the functions and is visible would be equal to true okay it, which it doesn't mean it's gonna show right away but when we call when we instantiate our object, like when a bullet hits an enemy ship and we call our explosion, um, then we want it to be true. Uh, so, and the stuff in the, structure only, in the constructor only happens when you call an instance of that object, okay? And I think you guys know that by now. Okay, next one is our uh, load content. We're only going to have one thing in here. So, public void load content. And it's content manager content like like we normally do. Um, it's gonna be texture. Would be equal to content dot load texture. And you know what? We might we don't even need this. Uh, now this was uh, I still have this in my notes from before I did my final testing on here. Uh, it's before I decided to go with a list. So we can leave our load content in here, but we're not gonna do anything with it right now. I should have updated my notes. All right. Um, next is our update function. So public void update, like our other classes, and it's game time. Okay. And in our update function, uh, we're going to be doing some stuff here for the animation, obviously. So it's probably going to be some stuff you don't recognize, um, but I'll comment it. Uh, increase the timer by the number of milliseconds since update was last called okay so let's add the code here and I'll explain timer is plus or equal to typecast it as a float game game time dot elapse game time dot total milliseconds okay and this is just something that um, a timer is going to be plus or equal to the elapsed time in milliseconds that's that's gone by, and it's going to add it up. Okay, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, uh, I guess, but um, there's lots of stuff um, if you Google X and A timers that will help it explain you much better than I'll be able to do it for you guys. Okay. Um, next, I'll comment it again. Check the timer is more than the chosen interval. And uh, remember, I told you the interval is the time between uh, frame switches, okay? So actually, um, I tested it with a higher number, so the animation is slower. But we're going to leave it at 20, because I think that the animation running through it, because it's 16 frames long, so we want it to be kind of quick, okay? Um, and the code for this is, if timer is greater to interval, uh, then we'll comment it. We'll say, show the next frame, okay? So actually we need to put our curly braces in here because we're going to have two. So let's cut this paste back up here. So um, if the timer is greater than the interval, then we want to do two things. We want to show the next frame. So current frame plus plus. So move on to the next frame. And then uh, we want to reset the timer. So a uh, timer is goes back to zero, where we have it set up here as our default right now. Okay. I'll explain this after we're done with our update function here in a, a little more detail. All right. And then uh, also we want to say if uh, we're on the last frame, which means the very last uh, picture in our sprite in our sprite sheet, uh, reset back to the one before the first frame. And uh, we'll say because current frame plus plus uh, is called next. 
so the next frame will be one. Um, just to kind of give, I know it's a long comment, but you guys know how I like my long comments, so it explains everything, right? So we're going to say if current frame equals 17, because uh, I know I said it had 16, but it actually has 17 uh, images in it. Here, let me open it up. Uh, we can go over here, and as long as you re-downloaded the zip file, you should have that. Probably, I think I had it in there the last video, too, in the HUD videos, but uh, uh, if you um, we'll add an existing item. And then uh, we're going to go here, my pictures, uh, YouTube tutorials, graphics, art. Um, and I don't even have it in here, so I'm going to have to go in my Dropbox and grab it. Um, it's in my public. I guess, I'll, I guess I'll have to go and get the, uh, the zip file and unzip it. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll, ex uh, we'll extract it. And we'll just extract it right in there. Okay, so let's see here. All right, and there's our explosion. So I'm going to copy that just so I have it here and I know where it's at. Sorry about this. Thought I already had it in here. Okay, but if we open this up, um, you'll see in better depth what it, what it looks like, okay? Um, so we got, it's actually 17 images long, okay? And then, uh, so that's how we know how many, f uh, we're saying if it, the current frame is at the very last frame, which is over here at the end, um, if the last frame is this box right here, well then we want to reset it back to the first frame, which is this one, right? Okay. All right, so if current frame equals 17, so if it's that last image in our sprite sheet, then we're going to say is visible equals false. And and actually this comment is wrong here. It's not this is not this is another thing when I was doing in testing. But actually what we're going to do um here I'll just delete this part. So if we're on the last frame, what we're going to do is we're going to um make the um, explosion invisible which will remove it from our list when we implement our mist list into our game one and then we're also going to say current frame equals zero 